Very good afternoon. You're watching the Midday News on Rajasabha TV. I'm Ashwarya with you. All the developing news stories at the top of a one. Coming up ahead, let us start with the headlines. Union Cabinet meets a focus on updating National Population Register. Exercises to commence from April next year. JMM Legislature Party meets in Ranchi, set to elect Hemant Surin as the leader. JMM-led alliance won 47 seats in the 81-member Jharkhand Assembly. Prime Minister Modi extends best wishes to the alliance. Vice President Amankia Naidu emphasizes on a need of innovation in several fields. Addressing the first convocation of NIT in Andhra Pradesh, calls on engineers to create a better weather prediction systems and make agriculture more resilient. Modi government focused on wiping out terrorism, left-wing extremism and insurgency in the next five years, says Home Minister Amit Shah, emphasizes coordination between security and intelligence agencies to address national security needs. And urban India except Bengal declared open defecation free. 4,320 cities out of 4,372 declared ODF. 65,81,000 individual household toilets constructed against a target of 59 lakh. Top story this afternoon, following Saturday's Council of Ministers meeting, the Union Cabinet met this morning in the national capital. The meet likely considered a proposal to allocate more funds for updating the National Population Register, an exercise which is to commence from April next year. The government has been preparing for the National Population Register. Under the NPR, a census will be conducted from house to house across the country from 1st of April 2020 to September 30, 2020. Its aim is to create a database of comprehensive identity of a common residents of the country. This data will also contain biometric information along with the demographics. The NPR initiative was started in 2010 under the Manmohan Singh government. Any re resident residing in any area in the country for six months or more is required to register with the NPR. The Jharkhand Mukti Morcha's legislature party is meeting in Ranchi today to elect its leader. All 30 newly elected MLAs have been asked to attend this meeting and the meeting is being presided over by JMM chief and former chief minister of Jharkhand, Shibu Sorain. It is expected that JMM working president Hemun Sorain will be elected as the legislature party leader. Now, this comes as uh, the GMM Congress RJD Alliance got a decisive victory in Jharkhand as votes were counted on Monday. The alliance won 47 seats in the 81-member Jharkhand Assembly. Hemant Surin, as the face of the opposition alliance, is set to take over the top post for the second time. He had earlier served as the chief minister between 2013 and 2014. And this time, again, he contested from two seats, Dumka and uh, Varhet and he won both the seats. This will be a meal of meat. And in this way, with the hope that people have been able to do it, I am very proud of the people who have been able to do it. I am very proud of the people who have been able to do it. चाहे वो किसी भी वर्ग समुदाय के हो चाहे नौजवान हो किसान हो महिला हो व्यापारी हो बूढ़े बच्चे हो किसान हो मजदूर हो मीनवाल द बीजेपी वन 25 सीट्स in the 2014 state elections, uh, the party had won 37 seats. Former Chief Minister Raghubar Das, who contested from Jamshedpur East, lost to his ex-cabinet colleague and uh, party rebel Sarchu Rai, who was uh, con 
testing as an independent. The current assembly elections uh, took place in Jharkhand in five phases uh, from 30th of November to 20th of December. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted his uh, best wishes to the JMM-led alliance, saying that I thank the people of Jharkhand for having given BJP the opportunity to serve the state for so many years. He also applauded the hard-working party karikartas for their efforts. He said we will continue serving the state and raising people-centric issues in the times to come. And Home Minister and BJP Chief Amit Shah also said that his party respects the mandate of the people of Jharkhand. On to some other news now. Vice President M. Mankia Naidu today called upon all higher educational institutions to nurture students to become responsible citizens of the country. He was addressing the convocation of the National Institute of Technology in Andhra Pradesh. The Vice President asked the younger engineers to come up with out-of-box solutions to the problems faced by agricultures, agriculturalists from climate change. He asked the engineers to create a better weather prediction systems and explore ways and means to make agriculture more resilient. For young engineers to come up with out-of-box ideas to the problems faced by agriculturists from climate change to increasing crop productivity, I urge you technocrats to understand the real problem faced by Indian agriculture, including fragmented land holding and insufficient market access. Can we understand the soil better? I would like to warn the entire country. This is what the scientists are saying. So how to minimize the use of water, maximize the production. This is a challenge. And then Indian agriculture is greatly dependent on weather. Keeping the changing climate and participation change in mind, can we create better weather prediction systems and make agriculture become more resilient? He added that uh, the technology needs to be explored and new ideas and ways are needed to be implemented. The Vice President said that every graduate uh, passing out of uh, the portals of these institutions must not only be academically proficient, but they also must be ethical, compassionate and honest individuals. You have the portals of the institution today as you leave, please remember that you are amongst the brightest young minds of our country. You live in a very exciting era of scientific and to technological disruptions, technological breakthrough in the form of automation, artificial intelligence, internet of things, big data and analytics have truly transformed the way we live and work. The existing frontiers of science are being constantly challenged through interaction between various disciplines ranging from arts to humanities to engineering to biotechnology. Young engineers like you, yourself have the never before opportunity to further revolutionize those technologies and find new ways to use them for the benefit of humanity. That the ultimate aim of all these technology advances, science, technology, research must be the betterment of the people of the, and the common man. They must lead to the discovery of solutions to the most pressing problems of our times. There is no doubt in my mind that innovation is the watchword for the 21st century. Innovation, incubation, automation, make in India, skill in India, digital India, clean India. This is the way forward and we must all work to see to it that the people are benefited at most by our technology, by our knowledge by our research, that is the purpose of this technology. It should really help the people. It should make them feel comfortable. It should make them more happy. And Home Minister Amit Shah has said that the NDA government is committed to completely wipe out terrorism, left-wing extremism and insurgency in the Northeast in the next five years. The minister was delivering the 32nd Intelligence Bureau Centenary Endowment Lecture in New Delhi and lauding the IB for ably tackling the challenges on national security. The minister made a special note of the work done by the IB in busting terror modules in the, in the last five years. He also appreciated the IB for uh, tackling Northeast insurgency very effectively over the years. Calling IB as uh, the brain of the national security apparatus, the Home Minister said that they have always helped to ensure 
zero tolerance to terrorism and Naxalism. And Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Monday held her ninth uh, pre-budget consultation meeting with the leading representatives from water and sanitation sectors in connection with the forthcoming general budget 2020-2021. During the meeting, discussions were held on challenges faced in providing quality of water, sanitation, solid waste management and uh, drainage in our country. The experts also talked about removing disparities in accessing sanitation and quality of water. BJP leader Shivraj Singh Chauhan has said that confusion is uh, being created uh, by the opposition parties on the Citizenship Amendment Act for vote bank politics. Addressing a press conference in Jaipur on Monday, he questioned the Congress, why is it not opposing violence in the name of protests? Jabardasti Brahm ka vatavaran paida kiya ja raha hai. Hinsa ki aag mein desh ko jhoka ja raha hai. Vot vang ki rajniti ke liye. Phoot dal aur rajkaro ki niti apnai ja rahi hai. मैं यहां के मुख्यमंत्री से भी सवाल करना चाहता हूं वो संवैधानिक पद पर बैठे यहां के मुख्यमंत्रियों मध्य प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्रियों पश्चिम बंगाल की मुख्यमंत्रियों वो कह रहे हैं नागरिकता कानून लागू नहीं हो करने देंगे संसद के दोनों सदनों ने बहुमत से बिल पास करके ये कानून बनाया है तीन तरह की सूची है कामों के बारे में कुछ काम ऐसे हैं जो केंद्र करेगा संघ करेगा कुछ राज्य करेंगे और एक संवर्ती सूची जो केंद्र और राज्य दोनों के बीच काम बटे रहते हैं नागरिकता का सवाल नागरिकता का काम यह केंद्र का अधिकार क्षेत्र है and an NGO, the call for justice in Delhi on Monday organized an event to discuss the Citizenship Amendment Act and its impact on society. The chief guests at the event were retired judges Parmod Kohli and SN Srivastav. And while addressing the program, both said that this act is in favor of India and the government needs to make people aware by running awareness campaigns. All of us has to take the society forward by taking into consideration every law enacted by the parliament or state legislature which has impact upon the society. As a matter of fact, every law is meant for the society itself and no law can be divorced from the interest of the society. Migrant ki definition mein proviso add kiya gaya hai. और उस प्रोविजो में उन्होंने सिख बौद्ध जैन हिंदू क्रिश्चियंस ये पांच छह जो पारसी इसको ऐड किया है कि ये माइग्रेंट्स नहीं माने जाएंगे प्रोविजो ऐड किया है और दूसरा अमेंडमेंट ये हुआ है कि 11 साल जो भारत में आकर रह रहे हैं उसको उन्होंने रिड्यूस करके पांच साल कर दिया है and uh, Harshwardhan Shringla, India's ambassador to the United States, has been appointed as the new foreign secretary. Seasoned diplomat Shringla has been appointed as the new foreign secretary for a two-year fixed term, succeeding Vijay Gokhale. Shringla is a 1984 batch officer of the Indian Foreign Service. He will take uh, over the charge of the foreign secretary on 29th of January 2020. The appointment has been cleared by the Appointments Committee of the Cabinet headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In the course of a diplomatic career spanning over 35 years, the Shringla has held a variety of positions in New Delhi and abroad.
And the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Defence has uh, recommended a complete revamp of uh, the DRDO or the Defence Research Development Organisation. It has uh, suggested the involvement of the private sector and academic institutions for its uh, resurgence and chalking out a plan to reduce the dependence on foreign vendors for military hardware. The recommendations were made by the Standing Committee, headed by BJP MP Jual Oram. And in its report, uh, in the demands uh, for grants for the Ministry of Defence for the year 2019-20, this has been suggested. The report has already been submitted to the Lok Sabha Speaker and uh, was also tabled in the Rajya Sabha during the winter session of Parliament. And India on Monday successfully test-fired its uh, quick reaction surface-to-air missile system from a base of the Odisha coast. Now, QRSAM is likely to be inducted into the armed forces uh, by 2021. The missile has been developed by the Defence Research and Development Organisations and uh, QRSAM was flight tested uh, with the full configuration in deployment mode, intercepting the target mid-air, meeting the mission's objectives. The QRSAM weapon system, which operates uh, on the move, comprises a fully automated command and control, active array battery multifunction radar and a launcher. We'll take a very short break here. We'll be right back with more news. On this edition of India as well, we will analyze the second 2 plus 2 dialogue between India and the United States. The United States has supported India's membership of the NSG and also said that it favors a permanent role for India in a reformed security council. That we are now 95% of the way to a final agreement uh, to get trade off the table uh, and allow us to move forward in other areas uh, which are the 2 plus 2 covers. Chinese have always been thinking of the South China Sea as being China Sea or the East China Sea. I mean, they, they want to lay claim to the whole thing and that is not going to be permitted. They have been very active there. They have actually uh, set up a, a, a no-flying zone over there. Uh, and uh, they have been tailing American aircraft, uh, American ships. They have tailed Australian ships. Million people have now given the thumbs up to Rajya Sabha television. RSTV's growth has been phenomenal, with the journey from 2 million to 3 million being completed in less than six months. That's over 6,200 new subscribers every day. Our online viewers are engaging with us more actively. Every day, thousands like, share, and comment on our videos. So come and join this growing tribe of RSTV viewers and get ready for an exciting journey. Welcome back after the break. With urban areas in 35 states and union territories uh, declaring themselves open defecation free, the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban has achieved its goal of making urban India free of open defecation. According to the Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry, over 65 lakh individual household toilets have been constructed, while the target had been 59 lakh. And close to 6 lakh community or public toilet seats have also been added against the target of uh, 5.08 lakh. A GST fraud of uh, 900 crore rupees in which uh, about uh, input tax uh, credit to the tune of 152 crore rupees uh, was uh, uh, unveiled in Tamil Nadu has been busted. Now, the information was given by a top official of the Directorate General of Goods and Service Tax Intelligence. The official said that the kingpin and two of his accomplices were arrested and produced before a court which remanded them to judicial custody. Further probe is on. 
In one of the major operations, the sleuths of DGGI, Chennai unit, carried out a search on 19th and 20th of December at multiple locations in the state and unearthed a fraud of a two to the tune of 900 crore rupees. A cash uh, totaling 24 lakh rupees was also seized from the residential premises of the mastermind. And the NIA on Monday conducted searches in Delhi and in Dimapur in Nagaland uh, at the houses of an accused in connection with the terror funding of Naga insurgent group NSCNIM. According to the NIA officials, the, the houses belong to Alimla Jamir, wife of James Jamir, who is a member of the steering committee of the organization. And on 20th of December, the Premier Investigation Agency registered a case under relevant provisions of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act for the terror financing of NSCNIM. Almela is uh, alleged to be working uh, for the organization and he was detained uh, in New Delhi with a cash of 72 lakh rupees by the income tax officials on 17th of December. External Affairs Minister S. Shankar on Monday met Iranian President Hassan Rouhani and apprised him of the outcomes of the Joint Commission meeting and progress in bilateral ties. The meeting comes a day after the two countries agreed to accelerate work on the strategic Chabahar port. The decision was taken at the 19th India-Iran Joint Commission. The Chabahar port, jointly being developed by India, Iran and Afghanistan, is considered a gateway to golden opportunities for trade with the Central Asian nations by the three countries. It is located on the Indian Ocean in the Sistan and Balochistan province of Iran. And voicing also concern over the grave threat posed by terrorism, India and Iran also jointly called for an immediate end to all support to terror sanctuaries. And Jay Shankar said uh, that his meeting with the Iranian Foreign Minister Javed Zarif and the, Indian de the Iranian delegation had been very, very productive. He said in a tweet, we reviewed the entire gamut of our cooperation and agreed on accelerating our Chabahar project. News from the national capital now. The Delhi government on Monday approved a policy on electric vehicles with a focus on two-wheelers and commercial vehicles to lead the change to switch. Chief Minister Arvind K. Shrival said that by 2024, we want that 25% uh, of uh, the vehicles uh, should be electric vehicles. The aim is to reduce air pollution and create large-scale jobs. The emphasis is going to be on two-wheelers and public transport. The government will also set up a state EV fund and a board to manage the same. Prime Minister Narendra Modi met Economic Councillor and Director of the Research Department at IMF, Geeta Gopinath, on Monday. Gopinath said that the regulatory uncertainty has played a major role in the economic slowdown in India. She also said that goods and services tax has been significant in formalizing the Indian economy. And now our special segment on climate change. Oceans and seas cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface. They regulate climate and generate most of the oxygen we breathe. They also serve as the foundation for much of the world's economy, supporting sectors like tourism, to fisheries, to international shipping. But despite their importance, oceans face unprecedented threat due to human activities. Every year, over 8 million tons of plastic waste ends up in the world's oceans. Climate change is also damaging coral reefs and other key ecosystems. Also, overfishing is threatening the stability of fish stocks. Nutrient pollution is uh, contributing to the creation of dead zones. And nearly 80% of the world's wastewater is also being discharged into the oceans without treatment. It is important to understand that taking care of our oceans is crucial for survival 
on earth. National Consumer Day is uh, being uh, observed across the country today and Vice President M. Venkia Naidu greeted people on the occasion and in a Twitter message he said uh, that consumers need to be made aware of the importance of the safety and quality of products. At the same time, they should also be protected from unfair and exploitive trade practices. And it is the festive season. Tomorrow is Christmas and the country and the world markets are in full bloom. People are busy shopping for Santa Claus dresses, masks, gifts, Christmas trees. Special decorations have been done in the churches and at homes on the occasion of Christmas. Carols are, go are being sung. There will be prayers in the churches today at 12 midnight. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.